I've been working on this uh, cherry sort of swan bowl, I guess you'd call it. Um, I found this wonderful cherry crook, uh, fresh green wood, uh, and I've just begun sculpting it into the, the, the neck of the swan, kind of flowing with the grain here and down through the body of the piece here. And you can see I've got some rough marks there and just have begun the sculpting process. The bottom will be cut back into here and the tail will come up through. But um, what I thought it would be a good opportunity to show is uh, how I use a Twica cam in some parts of a bowl, especially uh, odd pieces such as this one. Um, since I have a, a neck on this piece, I'll just put it in the vise, but um, for a regular bowl, I would probably put it on a low bench and secure it uh, with some hold fasts. Um, and so, so this is the Nick Westerman uh, Twica cam. Uh, Nick's a great blacksmith making these in Wales, but there are other smiths making them as well. Uh, to keep the edge uh, safe and secure and sharp, uh, I made a, a little sheath for this out of wood and uh, leather. And it's pretty simple, just folds around and then it clips with a little tab, a uh, little piece of wood. And so you can see, uh, Nick makes these in different sizes. I forget exactly which this is, but uh, it, uh, it doesn't really matter that they all will work the same. And so, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is the handle. Uh, when you buy a Twica cam, it often won't come with a handle, which allows you to make your own. This is just a, a, a piece of straight walnut that I had around uh, and uh, drilled a series of holes down through there, reamed it out a little bit, and then uh, put in some epoxy to secure, secure it in the handle. And I like a uh, kind of rectangular handle uh, with some chamfers on the corners. I feel like I can get a lot more torque on a tool like this uh, with a handle like that. And the length gives me a little leverage as, as I'll demonstrate here um, using the piece. So uh, in this case, on this bird bowl, uh, normally in a standard bowl, I'll put this at a bit of a different angle, a gouge works just fine uh, there we go. A gouge works just fine uh, to do the interior of a bowl, especially if it's not too deep. Uh, you can come in here with, with a gouge like this. This is a bent gouge from Hans Carlson. Uh, and you can work your way down through just fine, all, all the way into the middle portion of the bowl. You know, adjusting to the grain and, and so on. But when you get to areas like this deep undercut here, and I want it to be much deeper actually, I want that undercut to flow back into the chest area of the bird uh, and be much deeper and more undercut. And in order to do that, I have to switch out from a gouge. Now I could use a, a much deeper uh, a spoon gouge type of thing, but I, I really enjoy using the Twica cam uh, for this. So what it allows me to do is a, a number of different things. I can even use it on the main body of the piece in here. And I can secure it uh, back here against my leg even. And, and bring the tool down through. Now one, one thing I want to point out uh, when using gouges and some of the other tools uh, you can often take a much larger bite. When using a slicing tool like this Twica can you have to be committed to taking uh, thin shavings. You can take thin rapid shavings and move a lot of material uh, pretty quickly. Uh, and if you, you notice something else is Sometimes it's difficult uh, to keep the tool in the cut when you're moving it straight. Another technique is sort of a skew drag, where 
instead of pulling the tool at uh, 90 degrees uh, to its axis, I can skew the tool and take these, it will take these sort of spiral shavings as I just drag the tool along. And if I just continue working that way, you can see with lots of little shavings, it can add up very quickly. And in this undercut area, I can get deep down underneath. I can use a different portion of the edge on the far side. And again, with the long handle and using my body, I can get a lot of great leverage. To continue moving that back into the piece. So now I'll just quit talking for a few minutes and work with the tool a little bit and uh, we'll just, just see what happens and uh, see if I can work this back in. Well, I have a little more to do. I don't want to stop though. It's easy to get uh, carried away with this when it's cutting nicely. And uh, you can feel that gouge of the edge slicing through the wood. And you can smell those incredible green cherry chips. Uh, all green wood seems to smell so good. Uh, the, the experience is just so uh, joyful that uh, you don't want to stop. And, uh, uh, but, but that's enough, I think, that you get the idea of how to use this uh, wonderful uh, traditional Welsh tool called the Twickacan, uh, Welsh for uh, bent knife.